Bridge. Now in the tower of London, large as life, the ghost of Anne Boleyn walks, I declare. Oh, Anne Boleyn was once King Henry's wife, until he had the axe and ball the hair. Oh, yes, it happened many long years ago, but she returns each night to tell him so. We'll join in with an egg. She goes to find the king and Ray. She means giving him what for. God, so she means to tell him all. But have he spilled her gore? But just in case the ex wants to give her an encore, she's got an egg to underneath her arm. With an egg, a tooth, oh, underneath her arm. She wore the bloody tower with an egg to underneath her arm. And a boot. Oh. Along the drafty corridors for miles and miles she goes. She often catches cold, you know. It's drafty when it blows. But it's awfully awfully <laughs> awkward for the queen to blow her nose with the air to <laughs> So with air and a chop underneath her arms she walks the bloody tower with the Underneath the heart of the night owl. One day King Henry gave a spread for his gals and pals, a ghostly crew. The axeman called the joint and cut the bread, went in, walked down for them to clear the dew. She held her head up with a wild whoa whoop, and it reeked right down through it in the sink. So with the air, but just underneath the rock, she walked the bloody tower with a jump underneath the rock after me. One day she met King Henry. He was at the canteen bar. He said, Are you Jane Seymour? Anne Boleyn or Catherine Park? Now, how in heaven's name can I tell just who you are? With the egg to underneath the rock. So with the egg to underneath the rock, she walked the bloody tower. With the egg to underneath the rock, and the moon. <laughs> if you're short of languages, study Hogalalian. <laughs> yes. I have a presentation to make. Whereas Denise Silver has repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly <laughs> distinguished herself in the challenging arena of potpourri performance, delighting countless audiences with her wit. The chutzpah of her total disregard for time limits. <laughs> <laughs> her perspicacity, her musicality, the meticulous research. <laughs> and her Whereas Bernice has been a joyous, cheerful, caring friend to countless puppeteers, as being especially sensitive to identifying beginning puppeteers and making friends with puppeteers of all ages, and whereas Bernice has graced many public festivals with her joy, her honesty, her glowing presence, we, the Mid-Atlantic region and the four guilds of that region, do declare on this evening, Bernice Silver, Queen of Popery. <laughs> When in your life were you first inspired to work in puppetry? Well, I originally was a nursery school teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, puppetry wasn't a big thing at that period. However, I did make dolls out of scrap materials, and people liked them so well. And then when I came to New York, uh, I was going to reorient my job 
to it, my job uh, uh, potential. And um, I went down to an orientation. Uh, and a young man there became so interested in my dolls that he decided I ought to be a puppeteer. And so he kept on bringing articles to me. And the articles I uh, got uh, that he brought to me was when Frank Paris opened his new studio. What year was that? That was in 1961, I think, 19, about 1961. At that time, the Puppetry Guild was also planning to, uh, uh, to start, mm -hmm. and so I decided to join. However, what interested me is I picked up an article in the Popular Mechanic magazine, mm -hmm. Uh, they would show Dorothy Rankin working with black light material, which later ruined her health, by the way. But she was one of the pioneers in America with black light materials. Mm -hmm. And uh, in puppets or in theater? She did puppetry. Mm -hmm. And so I sent a letter to the popular mechanic to find out who this lady was. Mm -hmm. And they turned her letter over. However, I didn't get an answer for about six months, at which time they had a puppetry festival, which she invited me to. I didn't realize the importance of them at the time, and I was a little tired of waiting, so I didn't respond. Uh, however, I, uh, later on, uh, uh, the idea gelled. Uh, when this young man brought this article in, and I called up Ted and Frank, Frank very closely, mm -hmm. and uh, he answered me and said they were going off on their tour to the Caribbean. So they'd, I'd have to wait until I came back. So that was another, it was a good over a year and a half until I finally got myself involved. And uh, once I got involved, I was hooked mm -hmm. because I found it a delightful uh, medium of communication uh, and express self-expression. Art-wise, art it's so satisfying. And so uh, I felt that it was the thing I really wanted to embrace, mm -hmm. one of the uh, Thing. So I did. I started building up a show, and the first show I got was a uh, show in near Coney Island, and uh, uh, he sh he showed me how to make a finger puppet, this young man, but I showed him the things I was making, and I he uh, uh, he suggested I write a play. It was a recommendation through a friend, and so I did. I went home and I wrote a play, and the play is still good, and I still use it. Mm -hmm. Place, huh? It's around the world of Jelly Bean, mm -hmm. and Jelly Bean is my club, mm -hmm. and he um, he's a um, very charming fellow. He's an inventor clown, but it's, somehow his inventions never turn out right until uh, he finally gets a little, little help, and he's got a friend, Mr. Putum. Mr. Putum is the fix-it man, and uh, they work very nicely together. And uh, he's got a little baby lion who's his pet. And uh, he's an awful pest, but he's a, his pet. And uh, he always wants to get into the act. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's another very uh, cute, uh, so it's a cute little. So what puppeteers or other people were an early influence on you? Well, uh, it, uh, uh, Frank, of course, uh, was my teacher. And he was a good teacher. And he knew his theater. And I couldn't have found somebody better to get me started. So between Frank him, Paris. Frank Paris and Ted Lewis, they were both there to help me. And uh, they gave demonstrations of the work, and he showed us their work, his work. And uh, I was very much impressed. He had had people like Jane Withers popping in and out of his studio while, while we were working. And then, then later on, of course, we had the meetings there, the big meetings for the New York Puppetry Guild mm -hmm. when we started. How did you learn the art of designing uh, all the you know, paper uh, cutouts and all the other designs that you do? I was the first child on the law, uh, of many, many children. But uh, so, and when I was born, my aunts didn't have children yet. So uh, they concentrated on me, and one of my aunts uh, was very, as a matter of fact, they were all handy. 
They were handy and they sat, but uh, when they gave me time. But I also was the type of child that would sit and experiment. I could sit for hours and just do things I drew a lot. I uh, created, I loved costuming, I loved cutout dolls, and I made my own. And I made costumes very often, and I loved costume and design ever since I was a very young child. So, um, uh, at that time, many people sold. At what time? Of the uh, in my period, people made their own clothing, mm -hmm. and they made clothing for children. Uh, my mother wasn't that good at it. She bought us things, but uh, other people uh, sewed for us. They sewed, they stitched, they embroidered, they did all kinds of lovely things. So that was the way they expressed themselves at that period. Mm -hmm. When was that period? <laughs> oh, I lived way back. Mm -hmm. I was born in 19, the end of 1913. and. Uh, uh, I was born in October out of 1913, and I grew up in Coney Island. I was born in Brooklyn, and I uh, lived in Brooklyn until I was about five years old. And uh, we lived in a doctor's house because my mother used to clean for the doctor, and that was during World War One, at the end of the World War One, and um, uh, so I. Loved shells then, I loved sound, I loved song. I was a very uh, responsive child to any of the art forms mm -hmm. uh, at a very young age. And uh, when I was, um, uh, then we moved to Coney Island and we had other experiences there. Had experiences with the sea and with the sand, and it was a very nice place for up to a certain point. It was a nice place for kids, and I started schooling there. So I, but there was a little, for instance, there was a lady in the house, and I remember Helen gave this a circle a concept, and she was the one that at five years of age she taught me to cut a circle and to make a ballet costume. See. And uh, so, and that fascinated me. So, um, little things like that. The only disappointment I had was when I was about six years old, and I was, uh, they, someone came home with a Christmas Santa Claus whose arms swung. And they didn't want to give it to, let me touch it, and they didn't want to let me play with it. Uh, so, but. Uh, she said, he says, when you get to be my age, then you will be all to learn. But I never did get to learn it. My teacher never taught it to me. Mm -hmm. So I had to wait for many years, and then I taught it to other children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the basic puppetry course, was that uh, mostly hand puppets, or what type hey, of That was the hand puppet. Mm -hmm. He re uh, allowed us to make two puppets for each uh, uh, Out of what materials did What? Out of what materials did you Oh, um... Well, uh, let's see, did I cast, a, I think I cast my wooden head, which I still have, which by the way, I, uh, I also made my clown there, mm -hmm. a job, a jelly bean I made uh, uh, there, and uh, the uh, and is that Mr. Putum I made there too, and that's where I used them in the show, I already had them ready, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, so... Um, Mr. Putnam is a wooden head, mm -hmm. and I've made a couple of wooden heads, but I decided later on that I haven't got a strong wrist, mm -hmm. and so I have uh, not made any more wooden ones. I find the wood is, becomes a little heavy when you work it throughout the whole play. Mm -hmm. That's why I finally have evolved a, a new method of, of um, carrying my show. I make it out of construction paper, mm -hmm. or it's slightly heavier, so as it doesn't hold up, uh, which Frank said was a no-no with Frank. Mm -hmm. he, be he believed in making a puppet that lasts forever, and uh, he taught us to make a puppet that lasts forever with an undergarment, an undersleeve, and uh, he was quite fussy about the way he taught us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, and his, oh, his puppets, have lasted through the years, I guess mine won't. But people have the idea that because I have to use 
I use like maybe 20, 25 characters sometimes in a in a five minute show or ten minute show, and uh, so and I use it mostly for illustrative purposes. I do try to incorporate uh, the quality of movement within the drawing process or the uh, swinging eye or a, a moving nose mm -hmm. or uh, something that wiggles uh, so that it'll get, it has a feeling of movement. Mm -hmm. I also get the arms to move up and down uh, through uh, uh, just contrived means. Mm -hmm. How do you come up with the concept for your uh, potpourri skits? And when did well, the I'm start? interested. I'm interested in the foibles of the human race and the c human condition. Now, uh, this is a potential child bride. <laughs> <laughs> she is being ardently pursued by several ardent swains. <laughs> do not that she is sounding like a supersonic, demented Morse code <coughs> with uh, screams intermittently, just for the hell of it. No <laughs> 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 Mona Lisa. So what I do is I've used a, a professor who is uh, the translator of the information to the audience, uh, to her students or whoever, and I use the name for blended. For blended mm -hmm. in Yiddish means slightly uh, com uh, discombobulated, see, and um, or slightly mixed, uh, confused. In full gamut of pacification <laughs> and excitation, this the lovely Simeon will go through the entire gamut of of his uh, words play. I had seen at one of the festivals you do something on the foot. Now, how, how did that come about? And <laughs> I did a I did a foot happening, mm -hmm. and the foot happening. Strangely enough, I did it for two groups of senior citizens. And they loved it. I was I was amazed that uh, they they would catch on to it. But because they've got all these foot problems and they're so conscious of their feet, it really caught on and hit home. And uh, so that was another. So you've uh, done that before. You no, did that I do. Ring? The thing is this: I'm interested in the body, human body. So I've done one on the brain. I've done one on the um, skin. I did one on the feet. Uh, I did, uh, I'm thinking of doing one on smells, but I haven't gotten around to that yet. And, because uh, I've got to work on it. I do a lot of research, by the way. I, uh, so that essentially, a lot of my facts have validity uh, within the current concept. But current concepts are, can also change. We're always in the process of flux and change. So. It's uh, it's uh, interesting about you know how what you can do with the, with the, with the mediums that I've done. Of course, the animal life. I've done um, cockroaches, cats, fish, um, pigs, uh, snakes. Uh, mm, let's see what else I've done. And I've done so much, I sometimes forget what I've done. Mm -hmm. And doing the, uh, do you do it on the life of them, or how uh, humans react to these animals, or what, what, uh, It's mostly on how, uh, it, no, I don't think along those lines. Uh -huh. I, I put, put, incorporate how sometimes people uh, build up fall fallacious uh, superstitions, uh, fallacious concepts about uh, animals, about even their own bodies. I mean, and they carried on through the years, very often to their own detriment. Mm -hmm. And uh, until, uh, and even when science does propose truths, they cannot, uh, a lot of people will hold on for dear life to their uh, original concept. They said, well, it may be so, but not the way I heard it. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so that's, uh, it's, it's interesting. So it's not so much, it's not ridiculing, it's just putting people almost in a little way, 
uh, letting them laugh at themselves. Yes, it is said that we emerge. We emerge from the sea. Prove it to yourself. <laughs> Enjoying the, the laugh because it's always I always do it in a lighthearted manner. Uh, I don't try to impose uh, my thing in, in pedantry, and uh, I try to be as lighthearted as I can, which I am. Yeah, it's natural to me because I laugh at life. Do you remember the first festival that you attended, and also the first potpourri that you ever did? Well, the first uh, festival I attended was in Hurleyville, and Where I was. was that? This was right up in the mountains, up at the hotel. Um, gee, what was the name? Everybody remembers it by me. It was in Hurleyville, New York. Do you remember the year? 1962, about. Mm -hmm. Okay. I found uh, the people I met up there, the Battels, the Herricks, the. Uh, uh, who was that fellow who did the risque material? But oh, he was so good. 
He was so good. And uh, he Waylon put on Flowers. a show in the evening. It wasn't Waylon Flowers, I don't think, yeah. And uh, I think Carol Feejohn was there at the time, and Leah Wallace was there at the time, and Rod was there. They, uh, they, they had the really, uh, they had a lot of good people. And I'll tell you what was beautiful was the genera generous spirit with which these people shared ideas. I really fell in love with the people, mm -hmm. uh, almost as much as I fell in love with the 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 uh, uh, concept. Bosses mm -hmm. slack and do not neglect to pay. Those were Socrates' last words. Since I think I've missed maybe just a couple, I, I can't stand heat. Mm -hmm. Now I went down to the Georgia one and I love the people and I love the thing. Couldn't take the heat. As a matter of fact, they invited me down there to perform and I, uh, but it, they told me I could come in the spring when it's lots nicer. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the heat does bother me a good deal. Uh, do you remember when you first, uh, you did your first potpourri at a festival? Yeah. And how was it received? Uh, well, what happened is I did this, uh, I had, a, I belonged to folk music groups and um, had this folk music group and we met Kelvin Domov. Kelvin Domov belonged to a cat society and he asked me, he says they were having a party, would I do something on cats? At that time, I had no idea what to do. I had only a few little songs that I did with children and cats, you know. So I went down to the library and I started doing research. And I was amazed at the, uh, the information I was able to pick up in the library. I sat for hours and hours and hours, but I still didn't have a play. So the day before, I had to do it. I had a piece of brown fur and a pair of green earrings, and I made a, a cat out of that, and I made uh, just flats. I made uh, stick puppets, cat stick puppets, which I still have a couple of them left over, and I still use them for the children with the uh, uh, with different uh, with different things, and um, so I made the cat. I made cats. And I made uh, several, and I worked all night practically until I uh, got that show ready. And this was at the Olivia's Atelier. Well, all I could do was read the, the script. I picked out the highlights, and they, uh, they, they just laughed so hard. It was so comical that I said, this is what I have to bring up to the, um, to the festival. So the festival that year was in Ontario at the University of Waterloo. And they were going to have a big turnout there. Uh, and it was a beautiful auditorium that we all performed. And we had all our stages set out. And the person before me had a puppet. She was sort of jiggling up and down for her interminably. Uh, anyway, uh, there were some uh, good shows and good performers there, uh, but this happened. Well, when I got on with my cat happening, they, uh, do you know I got a standing ovation? 
you know, they 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 couldn't get over it. Mm -hmm. They just couldn't get it. Just how did you react? Uh, the funny part about it, I still wasn't sure about myself. I was still reading parts of it. Well, I I says I I think I hit pay dirt. Uh -huh. I'm going to work on different concepts of that sort because once I start going to the library and saw that uh, it, the library had so much information, it just um, with my peculiar turn of mind, mm -hmm. that how I can twist things around to uh, <laughs> to reason with my own uh, to pick up my own concepts about uh, how people react to things. So it was worked very nicely so far. I've been very pleased I've, uh, uh, I've, with the response. Average. <laughs> <laughs> and should you be more concerned with your pet camel? <laughs> One who is thoughtful and considerate. And should you prefer to have a pet as a rhinoceros? He is kind. He is good. <laughs> Sounds that end. 
end in M and um. And let me see what it says down here. Oh, it said, it is said, oh, let's see, it's on the next page, I think. <laughs> I lost the page. And as the ancient said it, the ancient Vedus, the ancient Vedus, the ancient Hindu, the uh, uh, Japanese Jadapis, the Hawaiian Khois, uh, the birds uh, do it. Let me tell you. Uh, they bees do it, and let me tell you, they were brothers that do it. Um, um, um. <laughs> I wanted to ask you when you did the chicken happening as a. Um, you got into costume for that, is that correct? Well, this is, is funny. That... I did it originally. I did it behind the scene in uh, Paul Zaloom's uh, studio. He had a party. And uh, I think he was raising money for the par that the party. So I did it, and somebody said, why don't you come out? She says, and show yourself. She says, because you're very, very funny. So I says, I decide. And what happened, T.C. forgot the chicken when I was going to do something on a, on a, um, with a bear chicken, you know, the defeathered chicken. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, going to do something on that, and he, um, and so he forgot the chicken, but it seemed as if it was all right because I had enough other gimmicks. Whatever it was, they enjoyed it. So uh, I decided to do the chicken happening uh, and, and make a costume for it. I was going to say, how did you decide whether to do uh, make a, either a costume for one of your happenings or to make, like, uh, like you said, use of paper uh, cutouts with, uh, you know, puppets that way? Well, you... I'll tell you, because I have to carry 20 characters. Uh, because it's becoming a burden to carry heavy things. I cannot carry heavy, sh heavy shells. So what I do is I try to keep it as light as possible. And the paper is light. And then that was, not only is the paper light, I can use so many characters that way. But how, when did you, did you make the determination to uh, get into costume for the cat and the... Uh, chicken as opposed to... Well, I didn't use this cat. Of... I don't use a cat costume, mm -hmm. uh, actually. I you just don't... I don't use a costume for everything. Mm -hmm. I just use it for some of the things. Because since I'm going to present myself, I don't like beer things. I think if you're on stage, you should be showy. Mm -hmm. um, have you had the uh, opportunity to work with uh, other puppet companies? Or did you... Oh, well, I work with... Them? I worked with Liam. I Set worked with Liam for a, for a couple of years, yes. I was uh, assisted her. And um, she, we worked on the TV shows that I participated in. Oh, do you remember what years you worked with Leah Wallace on uh, TV? Let's see. The we worked shows? on the... We, I also was at the World's Fair. Uh, I would, uh, it, it, we worked on... Um, what year uh, was that? Let's see what year was that? I have uh, some of the information there. Yeah. In 1964? Mm. World Fair? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I worked down there. I brought a lot of my puppets down and I put on shows on a couple of occasions. And we were also, I was interviewed with this woman on TV uh, at the World's Fair. And, um,. See, I've been on stage a couple of times, like even with folk music. I've, uh, I was on WRVR at a festival. I have some of the information here on that. And uh, they interviewed me, especially because, of course, I wrote a song that mm -hmm. they wanted to know how I approach writing a song. So uh, approach it like you write a play. <laughs> or anything else. I prefer, within my within my shows, I write songs too. If you'll notice that I sing a couple of things, those are all my songs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start this evening with the Queen of Potpourri, Bernice Bill. Yes. As Professor Bess, I am a blender. We 
which, in other words, means madam. Idio sin <laughs> Now, as you know from my previous lectures, I am constantly seeking the essence or roots of diverse forms of nature. <laughs> I hope you will pardon my necessity to refer to my notes so that I can give you absolutely accurate information. <laughs> Today we will discuss the pig. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
had a ring at the end of his nose that he didn't know what else to do with it. <laughs> and he had a telescope, a telescope for company. Then he said, me thinks, me thinks I see an arts and juice coming by. And he ran. <laughs> to greet them. And he said, ahoy there. And they said, we have come to be married. And he said, but well, what shall we do for her ring? He said, take mine. And he put it on her paw, which fitted more like a locket. Okay. And so they were married. And so they were married. And they danced by the light of the moon. And they really enjoyed the sunshine in happy hedonism. <laughs> but unfortunately, we also have our very sad, sad, sad pigs who do not escape. And they sit and they sing songs to themselves and are merry and happy. He says, I sit by the mud hole, bewailing my fate. I wallow, just wallow, just wallow. <laughs> the not me, I can't get past the gate as I wallow. <laughs> and wallow, and wallow. Who invented this big sty so small? and so tight to a pig in his prime. What a horrible sight. It's no use. I've got to get out of my plight. I won't wallow. I won't wallow. I won't wallow.
a new language to study, or if you should be seeking a new pet to embrace, do remember that the pig tends to snore and dribble. <laughs> He has a very, very active language. And he tends to speak in a low register. And I should like to teach it to you while I am here. Several words at least to get you started. So, should you intend to express strong feelings, you will say, boink, boink, boink. Or if you should say, Hello, what you, what's happening? You would say, Rahui, Rahui, Rahui. But you would be surprised. You will say and have an abrupt exclamation. And you will say, <laughs> So, that if you should see a fellow pig at your trap, you will tell him to move over by saying reek, reek, reek. <laughs> However, <laughs> oh no, he's not. This is the one. <laughs> that you're going to perform, do at festivals, or do you... No, I, uh, I, I carry with me. As a matter of fact, I've gotten into the habit that no matter where I go, uh, for any occur anything, I carry along a stapler and staples. I carry along uh, cre uh, a colored, uh, colored uh, uh, crayons or... Uh, or coloring pencils, or cray Crayolas, or whatever. And uh, I always carry along sheets of uh, paper. I recently gave a class spontaneously up at Camp Friedman. She asked me if I'd help out the children. And I said, uh, okay, I'll give them an ecological, uh, an ecological class on puppetry. So I went out and I selected pine cones and branches and leaves, and uh, I gave the children a class in ecological puppetry, and it was very, very satisfying to show what they could do. 
And it's amazing, they, they just fell into it. They're still talking about it because they uh, feel that it was a very, um, uh, it's such a nice way of recycling. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, do you have a preference? Do you uh, enjoy performing for children or adults more, or do you um, get satisfaction from Well, I love so children. Well. I love children, but I just enjoy performing, frankly. Mm -hmm. I love to enjoy it. Can you tell us about the monkey happening you've done? Yes, the monkey happening. I did quite a, a bit of research, and I guess uh, good old, uh, they started by my observing that. Uh, although it didn't really, the monkey is a very good character for, for performance. I, I made a costume for that right away, but in, um, when I did it in uh, California at the, um, what is it, University, not San Luis Obispo, I did it there, there. and um, all of, I didn't know, uh, that, no, it was up in, uh, was it San Luis Obispo, no, uh, Mills College. I didn't know that, um, uh, what's the name, Steve Henson Steve was going to carry me off. That was a complete <laughs> surprise to me. On top of that, I was wearing the mic at the time, and he didn't realize that I was attached to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> How important do you think potpourri is to a festival, Bernice? I think a potpourri is a very integral part of it. First of all, uh, uh, people are bringing new material. Sometimes it's at low level, sometimes it's at very high level. I have seen people who wouldn't uh, get an opportunity to perform, and yet they performed some, uh, gave us some very fine material, and certainly some very original material that you wouldn't see. I'd like to see, I don't like people copying. I love to see people uh, expressing themselves naturally because when they do, they produce the best material. You've got to give yourself. You cannot do other people's material right. And people should not emulate others. They must bring out their own personality in the process. The only thing I appreciate, would appreciate, I believe every person should study uh, addiction. Uh, theater people uh, do not, uh, all theater people do not articulate well. Uh, I happen to have a hearing condition, and uh, it's, um, and although uh, it's corrected, it still is limited because it's limited to the way the sound is received by me. So I have to qualify it. Now, other people go who have similar uh, conditions or similar, thing, uh, similar uh, problems. Um, it may not be on the same level or a different type of problem. However, a, a, a theater person must remember this person is going out first for entertainment, and if you okay, if they can carry home part of that uh, entertainment and to and use it for their own life, like one woman sits down next to me at one of the classes, and in the darkness she says, "You know, I love your work. Oh, I live in the boondocks, and all went along, my husband and and I keep on repeating the things you said and in your potpourri. Well, that's very pleasing." that somebody uh, catches you on the fly like that and you meant something in their life so that you enrich their life. But if she had not heard me, if I didn't speak as clearly as I tried to, uh, look what she, she might have missed something that she would have, that would have meant a little lot in her life. At festivals I know you become the called the queen of potpourri and I want to know how does that make you feel and you, uh, people in the audience are going Bernice, Bernice, Bernice. <laughs> I want to know. Uh, it's the first time in my life I've ever had a fan club. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how does it feel to have a, huh? a loyal fan? I'm still Bernice. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens, I've I, 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 people uh, tell me after they've seen you they still you're still the same way you were. And yeah, because I try to be a decent human being. I try to be, I really made it a point to be honest, as honest as I expect people to be. And I try to be that way, so because I don't believe in handing out uh, 
uh, false uh, notions mm -hmm. uh, about how people should act when I, if I don't fulfill my own obligations to society. She's going to sing us a couple of songs. Right. <laughs> you mean he, he saw so me? I didn't realize. Hey, what's me? What's me? The Daily Gabber. Buy a Daily Gabber. For the jibber jabber. <laughs> okay, so, because I have seen some history and I read between the lines. Some people think that what they see is the way for things to be, but that is not the way for me. For I read between the lines. Oh, yes, we've had some presidents, they left and us a lot. They like to tell us what we have that we know we haven't got. <laughs> and when they speak to the public, they think that they're the whiz. But what they tell the public is it always is. Oh, I have seen some history and I read between the lines. So you can see that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have seen some history and I read between the lines. Some people think that what they see is the way for things to be. But that is not the way for me, for I read between the lines. And um, by the way, are you people in ecology? Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, <laughs> I wrote a little song for you. OK. OK. It's called Way Down Yonder. Way Down Yonder, where the waters flow. They lived a seahorse who played banjo because that's the thing he knew how best to do. He sang of rivers, he sang of streams, and all the strange things in his dreams, and the peculiar happenings in his glimmering sea. He sang of octopi that cry because their tentacles will multiply. One grows short, the other one grows long. He sang of crabs that are growing <coughs> and the fish that are growing shabbier. <laughs> 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 and that's the very reason for the song. So, dear friends, take my advice and do think once, do think twice before you throw that plastic in the sea. It won't hurt you, it won't hurt me, but it will cause, sure will cause some misery to brothers. Dolphins in this <coughs> glimmering sea. Oh. Everybody sing. Oh, way oh, yeah. down yonder, the way that water flow, the lift the seahorse, the way Because that's the thing he knew how best to do. He sang of rivers, he sang of streams, and all the strange things in his dreams. And the peculiar happenings in his Delivering Now, all of you have, were not able to go to or participate in the wonderful puppetry around the world, around the country on Puppetry Day, but Fortunately, we had a very lovely turnout in the public library, and I, this was one of the songs that seemed to win a little favor. This is my song, Katie. Hey. Hey. Anyway, that's right, Katie the Kangaroo. Katie, and oh, by the way, you're going to sing part of it. Okay, okay. So remember the words as I'm saying it, because I'm trying to arch. You wait very well. Katie, Katie, Katie the kangaroo. 
She wanted to live in a private house. I ran away from the zoo. Oh. She looked for a job in the neighborhood. Her mother said, what can you do? I'll take care of your baby when you go on. I'll take good care of her too. Well, a sitter is just what I'm looking for. But tell me, who are you? Oh, that's your mother. Hey. I'm Katie, I'm Katie, and then I'm a lady. I'm Katie the kangaroo. Oh, a Katie, a Katie, a Katie the kangaroo. She wanted to live in a private and ran away from the zoo. Well, the mother had so many things to do, and Katie was willing to shop. It took just a moment, and she was back. She made the whole trip in one hop. <laughs> she served up the meal when father came home. He said, oh, good evening, my dear. Who are you? Oh, I'm Katie, I'm Katie, I'm Katie, I'm a lady. I'm Katie the kangaroo. Oh, Katie, Katie, the Katie the kangaroo. She wanted to live in a private house and ran away from the zoo. Well, mothers and fathers have their own problems and they get very tired. So they decide to go to the movies. And they left the little baby there with Katie. So she, oh, they went to a movie. And when they came home, found Katie asleep on the couch. Their dear little baby was not in this gym. Well, I think I lost the baby. <laughs> Pennsylvania, 
lovely music, if I may. I would hear that, that lovely music, if I may. Then I must arrange a concert for you another day. Thank you, Mr. Franklin. I can no longer say I must be on my way. And Inquisitive lady. <laughs> Inquisitive lady. And she sees Mr. Franklin. She, oh, who she thinks she knows. And Mr. Franklin is exit, exiting Independent School. An inquisitive woman. Hello, Mr. Franklin. Tell me, Mr. Franklin, about your big to do today. To do? Oh, no, no, no. Not that a to do, madam. Today, we are going to give it a republic. And if you can use it wisely and well and with good sense, I would thank you very much. <laughs> Has anybody here seen the Queen of Popery around anywhere? Oh, yes, that happened. 
seven long years ago. But she returned to tell, to tell him so, with it tossed on the deep alarm. She wrote, this is your part. <laughs>
Jesús no va a poder guiar con 